Hello everyone, so today I will be doing the commentary for Season 4, Commentary 4, <laughs> Season 4, of uh, Funko Street, my stop motion. Uh, happy 4th of July, by the way, because I'm uploading this on 4th of July, even though today is July 1st that I'm recording this. Um, well, June 30th, but I'm recording this at midnight, so it's technically July 1st. But anyways, um... Yeah, this is a uh, this is a very wild season here uh, for fans of the show, um, and I want to give a shout out to several people uh, real quick. Uh, I want to do that first because um, I've gathered a few more fans actually with this season, um, people I didn't know that actually watched this because you know this show isn't too popular or anything like that. Um, but I've noticed some people leaving comments on you know s several of these episodes. Um, first shout out is gonna go to Bad Productions 151. That's his username. Um, he's leaving great comments, you know, saying how these episodes are all fantastic and you know stuff like that. I want to thank you because that's you know means a lot. Um, also, another guy, Jeremy Gordon. That's his username. He's leaving comments as well. Um, pretty much, you know, out of the <laughs> 50 people or so that watched the show. Uh, I have several that like to leave comments and, you know, uh, thank me and stuff. And, uh, I'm trying to see, uh, I'm looking at my phone here. Who else? Uh, there's another guy named Ryan. Uh, here's his last name. Z-A-S-A-D-N-Y. Zazadny? Ryan Zazadny. He, uh, he sent me a message and talked about how much this, uh, this series means to him and a bunch of other stuff. And I want to thank him, too. So those three guys, um, I don't think I'm leaving anybody out here. Um... I noticed, you know, as I'm talking about fans, I, people I didn't know already were fans of the show. Like, I know, you know, Aaron, my biggest fan, I, got, I thank him every season, because he's always been my number one fan. Uh, wannabe Comedy, well, his new name's Wannabe Aaron, but yeah, all you guys are awesome. Uh, so I'm going to give all you guys a shout out next season, you know, because in the end credits, if you notice, of each season of the show, um, I give a special thanks. I've only been doing that with Aaron, my biggest fan, but I'm going to give all you guys a, a thanks the next season, so um, I really appreciate it. Now, like I said, I'm recording this on July 1st, so not all the episodes have come out yet. The finale is supposed to be out on July 3rd, um, so I don't know what the reaction is going to be like for that. I hope you guys enjoy it, but anyways, you're probably hopefully listening to this commentary and, you know, <laughs> getting excited that I mentioned you, but uh, yeah, so let's talk about this season. This season is obviously it entirely different from the first three in that um, I actually used a new lighting setup here. Um, I used my ring light, which I recently purchased, which looks fantastic. These pictures look incredible. Um, like, just look at that. Like, you know, you could see all the details better because um, I do use the Canon 7D camera. Um, I've always used that, but I've always been using my lamp as my lighting. And that doesn't really do a good job. Like, I have a lamp that has an adjustable head on it. Like, if you go back to the very first episode of the show, you could see it. Because Deadpool gets on top of it or whatever. But, um, I was using that for lighting, and it did not do a very good job. Because it's a lamp. I mean, it's not meant to light a whole scene, like, you know, for, for stop motion or whatever. So I've been using my ring light, which is used for when you're filming your face, you know, using videos where you're filming yourself and it lights your face up and everything. It looks very nice. I've, I've used it in several videos, um, uh, aside from, you know, this, uh, some reaction videos, my, uh, 2000 subscriber thank you video. Um, and I gotta say these pictures, like I said, look very, very nice. And, uh, that's one improvement I wanted you know, definitely to have was better lighting, you know, better all around. I mean, season three, I think was very good, very well done, but I look back at it and yeah, the lighting, you know, the lighting wasn't terrible or anything. It's just, you know, as compared to this, it's, <laughs> you know, and also if you notice the first three seasons have like a yellowish kind of tint to them, that's because of the light bulb I was using. Now, obviously here, these episodes have like a bluish white tint to them. If that makes any sense, well, that's what my room actually looks like. It looks like this. It doesn't look yellow like the you know first three seasons appear to be. That was because of the light bulb I was using. Now, with the ring light, it has a nice white fluorescent light bulb in it. And, yeah, it makes everything appear more brighter and a lot sharper and everything. So, yeah, and um, that's one thing I'm very uh, happy with. I'm happy how these pictures turned out. This is by far the best 
in terms of quality, um, I don't know about story-wise. I still think uh, maybe Season 3 is the best in terms of story-wise. I feel like that one uh, was very well done. Um, this one I do enjoy. But this season overall, though, if you'll notice, is about more so, um, you know, people getting killed and coming back to life and all that stuff. But uh, Season 3 had the dynamic with Travis and Rick, of course, and also the Joker was the main villain and whatnot. And then you had the surprise with the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Marshmallow Man. So that season overall had a lot of things going on. Whereas this season, not really. Um, what I decided to do is I decided to come up with a few storylines that would actually take over the course of two whole seasons. If you'll notice, excuse me, um, each season has their own pretty much storyline. Like season one was just like the introductions, you know, in the first few episodes it was like whatever. You know, it wasn't really a planned out show in the beginning, which is kind of obvious. Um, and I've said this many times, I didn't really plan on doing anything special or any longevity. Um, in the first season, or in the first few episodes, in the, like the last half of the first season, you'll notice the story starts to uh, you know come together with Doc Brown and the time machine and a lot of stuff and Pinhead. So season one was its own thing, really. It left off you know with Doc Brown coming back to the past or whatever, but it stopped right there. It didn't show you what happened. Season two showed what happened with Doc Brown coming back, and then you get introduced to the Joker and all that stuff. Um, very much similar to season one, but it was his own contained storyline, you know what I mean? Like, it was the mission to the past, whereas season one was, you know, what happened to cause, the you know, season two to start. Um, so they were separate entities, but they were very similar, season one and two. Um, and then season three, of course, was completely different. You didn't have any time travel stuff, really. Um, you had the whole... Travis's group versus the Joker's group, but you also had the main dynamic of Rick and Travis and whatnot. Um, and then, and this season, you know, is very different as well. And like I said, I decided to come up with a few storylines that would take the course of over two seasons, because you don't always want to have one solid storyline just for a whole season. Like I said, season three was just the storyline of Travis's uh, group versus, you know, Joker's group. Um, that took the course of one season. But I decided, you know what, there's some storyline, there's several storylines I could blend together that would take longer than one season. You know what I mean? You don't want to just give up a good storyline. You can include several and have them occur at the same time. So, I came up with this idea to have three storylines. You have the storyline with Travis and his brother, Agent Smith. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say it's going to take two seasons, I'm talking about this season and season five. Obviously, if you've seen this whole season, it ends with, okay, we're going to war. Nothing's been resolved, aside from the Undertaker thing, which I'll get to. But um, this uh, sets up what's going to happen in Season 5. But, you know, it's not just like a precursor to Season 5. There's also many things that happen in this season that are, you know, whoa, like, you know, they're permanent. Um, this season does stand on its own. But things get resolved in Season 5 more so. So you have the one storyline with Travis and his brother, um, Agent Smith. Then you have another storyline with Task Force X, you know, the Suicide Squad. Um, even though they're kind of in the same realm as uh, Agent Smith, but that's a completely separate thing because Travis has to fight them separately um, in his group. And then you have a third storyline, of course, with The Undertaker and The Afterlife. Now, I decided to mix all three because I had the idea to have all three of these storylines when I was, you know brainstorming for what I could do, because I want to take this series very far. I actually already know what I want to do for episode 100, which, if you think about it, episode 100, wouldn't that mean season 10 finale? Yeah, that would be the season 10 finale, because, you know, 10 episodes a season. So, we're only on season 4, and I already know what I want to do for episode 100. I'm not going to say, obviously, but when you already know things you want to do far in advance, it's like, okay, i got to think of so many different storylines I could have in this show. So, right now we're 40 episodes in. I still got another 60 to go, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying the show's going to end at episode 100. I actually know things that are, well, not major things that are going to happen after episode 100, but I have ideas. So, this show will go on as long as I can, as long as I, you know, feel like it can. So, it's going to go past 100 episodes, I, I promise you that. Um, but anyways... So I decided to come up with these three different storylines, and I said, you know what, these would mix well together if I just found a way to make them happen. Um, 
Now, first, I'm going to talk about this right here, Agent Smith. Now, you'll notice um, that Agent Smith and Travis have, like, a bad past. Like, they've uh, had bad blood or whatever. It gets mentioned several times, like, you know, last time we saw each other, things weren't so good and all this stuff. Um, you're going to find out more about that in the next season. Like I said, this is a uh, precursor. Well, it's not really a precursor, but it sets up things for Season 5. You, you get to find out more about Travis and his brother in Season 5, so... Um, I purposely didn't reveal what it was that happened between them, but you get several little hints. Um, also, the second storyline here is, of course, the uh, Task Force X. Um, now, I came up with that because I wanted all these characters to die. Like, well, I didn't want them to die, you know. Um, I wanted, I needed them to go to the afterlife because I came up with this idea for the afterlife thing back in Season 3. Because, if you notice, there's an episode called Corpse Fairies, where Deadpool talks about, you know, why the body, everybody's body disappears after they die. Um, what happens to you after you die, yada yada. So, I decided um, it would be cool if I went back and brought back some characters. Because, you know, like I said earlier, Season 1, I didn't really plan out that well. And even Season 2, to be honest, I kind of, like, wish I did better on that. I kind of rushed Season 2, to be fully honest with you guys. Um, because I was in such a hype, I was in such a hyped mode after making season one's finale. I was like, "Oh my god, I gotta make season two! I gotta make season two! I kind of rushed season two, to be quite honest. Um, it didn't turn out as good as I liked it to be. But I rewatched it recently, and I don't hate it. It's just uh, I see a lot of problems. Like the episodes were way too short. Um, you know, there were several other things. I killed off characters I didn't really want to kill off. Um, you know, like, I killed off Deadpool, for example, but I, you know, in my mind at the time, I was like, you know what, I should kill Deadpool off, um, it'd be a big shocker, and like I said, in that commentary, you can go back and listen, I said, if I kill, if I, if Deadpool were to stick around, he could kill off any bad guy easily, because, you know, he's got the superpowers, he can teleport, he can do all this stuff, but, you know, he is a fan favorite, I thought it'd be cool to bring him back to life, and also several other characters, because at the end of the season, not only does Deadpool come back to life, um, Rick and Travis, obviously, come back to life as well. But, um, I decided to bring back, you know, if you watch the end credits scene after, um, in episode 40, uh, after the credits, there's a scene where Pinhead, Chucky, Panable Lecter, Ash Williams, Big Daddy, um, I think that's all of them? Pretty much Pinhead's whole group comes back to life. Uh, Negan, there you go, I almost forgot Negan. How can I forget ne Negan? <laughs> but, um... I brought them back also because I think I can do more with them. You know, those are too much, those are too interesting of characters not to kill off permanently. You know what I'm saying? I wish I could do more with them. So I decided to bring them back as well. Um, and also, if you'll notice, in Pinhead's group especially, a lot of the pops are different because I have several versions. Like there's a newer Chucky pop. I wanted to use that, you know, because I've said before, I would like to use every pop I own in this show. And I was like, wait, how can I use this new Chucky pop if I've already killed off Chucky? How can I use this Negan pop if I've already killed off Negan? Because, you know, when Negan was on the show in season one and two, he was just the action figure from uh, McFarlane Toys, I think it is. There was no pop of him at the time, and now there is. Um, there's also a new Ash pop from, you know, Ash vs. Evil Dead. There's a new uh, Cthulhu pop that I bought recently. Cthulhu was just a little plush toy in the first episode. And now I actually have a pop of Cthulhu. So I was like, how am I going to use all these pops if the characters are killed off? Like, sure, I can show them in the afterlife, but I want to do more with them. I think they're great characters. Um, it'd be cool to bring them back to life. So at the end of this season, I decided, you know what? As an after credit surprise, I'm going to bring them all back to life. And I introduced the Book of the Dead, which is a little notebook I have that looks like the Book of the Dead. Um... And I thought it'd be cool to use that. If you, if you guys don't pick up, though, why they, they come back... Because, you know, The Undertaker tricks them at the end. He says, oh, there's only three portals. Only three of you can come back to life. I did that for suspension. Obviously, I'm not going to bring back everybody. Because people... You know, there has to be tragedy. There has to be permanent losses. And Jeffrey was one of them. And I'll get to that later, obviously. But uh, I needed that to happen. So you think, oh, God, only three of these guys are getting out of here. Everyone else is dead permanently. Um... So, to bring back those evil people, Pinhead's uh, group, I needed something uh, that would work. And I said, you know what, the, the Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon, 
you know, in the movies, uh, especially the Evil Dead films, they are used to bring back spirits and, you know, manifest these different uh, deadites and whatnot. And I thought it'd be interesting, you know, if you bring back, use the Book of the Dead, you can <laughs> bring back anybody pretty much from the deepest depths of hell. So that's what that did, if you, if you see that. Um, if you're wondering how those guys came back to life. Now, Jeffrey, unfortunately, is permanently dead. Everybody else is permanently dead. That doesn't come back to life in this season is permanently gone. Um, you know, there's a chance it could be, you know, shown in a flashback or something in the future, you know, something like that. But as of, you know, this series going forward, they are gone. Um, because like I said, this season needed to have tragedy. Now, this entire season, if you'll notice in some of the episode titles, there's uses of the word death, there's uses of the word devil, uses of the word hell, um, you know, there's several other titles that aren't so bleak, but, <laughs> you know, um, and I'll talk about the titles also, because that's one of my favorite things to do, is come up with titles for the episodes, so, um, we're on episode, well, coming up on episode three now, but episode one was called Mr. Nice Guy, now that episode, I wanted to start this season with one relaxing episode, you know, one episode, uh, you know, just, see these characters at their fullest, you know, having fun, enjoying life, blah, blah, blah. But also, I wanted to introduce this idea of Travis not being a bad guy anymore. He call, You know, Joker calls him Mr. Nice Guy. I wanted to have a little scene at the end there where Travis has a nightmare, you know, where Daryl, uh, where he shot Daryl. And then also this thing of, like, what happens if it was somebody you cared about and Jeffrey getting killed, which also is kind of foreshadowing. There's a lot of foreshadowing, too, in this season, which I'll explain but, um, yeah, I wanted to um, have that scene at the end of episode one, though, where Joker's like, I know this isn't you, Travis. You're putting up this little act. You're a true, vicious person. Because the Joker, obviously, you know, he says the line, I embrace who I am. I'm not a coward like you. Um, the Joker and Travis are completely opposite, because the Joker, like I said, he sh full force <laughs> does what he wants to do. Travis, on the other hand, has to suppress the evil side of him. Which obviously isn't gone fully, because at the end of the season, the last episode's called No More Mr. Nice Guy, and he's like, we're going to war, we're killing all of them, you know, I'm going after my brother. So Travis actually, <laughs> Joker was right, Travis was putting up a little act, if you think about it. So I thought it'd be cool to call that episode Mr. Nice Guy, because, um... There's a song called no More, no More Mr. Nice Guy by Alice Cooper, which is actually used in episode 40 for a brief few seconds. Um, I'm surprised I was able to get away with that, by the way. I'll, <laughs> I'll talk about that later. But, um, I had this idea to incorporate No More Mr. Nice Guy, the song by Alice Cooper, as the title, as the last episode, and then the first episode could just be called Mr. Nice Guy. So the first episode of this season is called Mr. Nice Guy, and the last one's called No More Mr. Nice Guy, because it goes full circle. Travis is no longer putting up this little act anymore. Now he's heading into season five as a full-fledged, you know, I'm getting revenge, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill all of them, pretty much. So, that was uh, interesting for me to use. And I envisioned that I would be able to use the No More Mr. Nice Guy song, but of course, YouTube's copyright <laughs> problems prohibit that. But um, I'm, I'll explain later how I got away with it. Now, episode two passed by, that one's called Goodbye. Simple title, uh, but it has several meanings. Now, um, I won't get into, too, get into it too much. But if you'll notice, um, in episode 36, I believe, yeah, 36, the one where Travis actually gets killed, he has this conversation with Smith um, about the saying, Auf Wiedersehen, which is German for, uh, till I see you again, or whatever. But um, I wanted to, uh, that's going to have, that's going to be explained next season, if, if you uh, don't know. Because I didn't really elaborate on that, like, why are these guys talking about these things? I don't understand what's happening. It'll all be revealed next season. Trust me, you'll see. Um, now, that was a saying that Travis and his brother would say to each other when they were working together in the past as hitmen. But um, I thought it'd be cool to in incorporate the word goodbye because it's the opposite of, you know, Av Peterson, hello, or whatever. It's the opposite. And also, in that episode, Travis is saying goodbye to his friends. He has to leave them. And also, I thought it'd be cool in uh, Agent Smith's introductory episode the title will be called Goodbye, even though you're being introduced to this new character. It's like the opposite. And also, that foreshadows Agent Smith, because he is putting up, uh, he, he's pretending like uh, he's saving Travis, and really he's going to kill him. 
you know, Smith is a bad guy, but really he's a good guy. Uh, no, he's pretending to be a good guy. You think he's a good guy, but he's actually a bad guy. So I thought it'd be cool to have the double meaning there. Um, that's why the title's called Goodbye instead of, you know, Hello or whatever, even though it's an introductory episode for uh, Agent Smith. And he's in the thumbnail and everything for the episode. So I thought that was cool to have a double meaning right there. And episode three is called Wade's World, which is a parody of <laughs> Wayne's World, of course. Um, I just came up with that pretty easily because I knew the episode had to deal with Deadpool discovering these things of why he has his own realm and all this stuff and, you know, talking to the Undertaker. So I thought it'd be funny if Deadpool came up with a name for where he lives and I came up, oh, Wade's World sounds like Wayne's World, so I'll just use that. So that's how that happened. And then, you know, I'll talk about the episode titles for the next few episodes once they start playing. But anyways, um, as you see here, Travis and Smith are discussing several things, but... Like I said, I really can't wait to do the next season, because you'll find out way more about them. And um, and I don't know if it's obvious that Smith was a bad guy. Um, one of the guys, I think Jeremy Gordon that I mentioned earlier, left a comment, where uh, on episode 36, when Smith kills Travis, he's like, oh, I saw that twist coming. <laughs> but I hope it's not too obvious, you know what I mean, for everybody else. I hope it's not too obvious. Now, I also want to talk about the whole afterlife thing. Now, I actually had an idea... Um, I don't know if it was during season two or three, but I had an idea of the afterlife thing being used much later on. I was going to actually make Funko Street the movie, <laughs> uh, which would be like an hour long stop motion special or something like that. And it was going to include Travis um, getting killed somehow and going to the afterlife and having to resurrect, you know, come back to life doing whatever. I didn't, you know, think of the artifact thing back then, but. I thought that would be cool for the first Funko Street movie or whatever. So and I was going to call it Travis Goes to Hell because I thought that would be a cool title. And that's what I used, you know, for episode 37, which, you know, is what happens. Um, so I actually thought that would be a cool idea for the movie. I didn't do it, obviously, but I saved it for... I used it for this season. Because I thought about it, I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> movie, I don't know if I'll be making a movie, uh, an hour-long stop-motion uh, let me just do the episodes for now. Maybe in the future, if this show gets popular, if, you know, uh, I get big on YouTube, I, maybe I can make a full movie eventually. But I save that storyline for this. Um, and then also right here, you get Task Force X. Obviously, a lot more meaner <laughs> and a lot more uh, brutal than the film version. You know, in this film, Suicide Squad, they're more like good guys. Obviously, they're bad guys, but... They're, you know, they're the protagonists in that movie. And in this series, I wanted to completely change that. I made these guys absolutely brutal, especially the Rick Flag, if you notice. He does not put up with anybody's you-know-what. Uh, but, uh, yeah, these guys are <laughs> just ruthless. And I thought it'd be cool to have this, you know, whole team of people that can't be stopped. And Agent Smith hired them and uh, used them to kill Travis's... Well, the real ha thing that happened, they say they're looking for Travis, but really, here's Agent Smith's plan if you can't figure it out. Because, you know, I did leave things very ambiguous. You don't know all the details. Pretty much what happened, for some reason, I won't reveal it because, you know, you'll find out in Season 5. For some reason, Agent Smith wants to kill Travis. So, this is what he does. He hires a group to kill Travis's friends. Now, they say they're looking for Travis, but really, they're not hired to kill Travis, right? They are looking for him so they can find the group. So, let's just say Age, uh, Task Force X did find Travis and his group, right? He would, uh, they would kill the entire group, but not Travis, because Agent Smith is the one that wants to do it. Now, like I said, I'm not going to reveal all the details as to why, but um, that was the plan. Now, obviously, Smith decided to show up and take Travis away because Smith wants to kill Travis himself by all alone. He doesn't want his friend... Because if Smith were to kill Travis in front of his friends, you know, Rick and all of them, Rick would, you know, kill Agent Smith. So that's why Smith showed up to take Travis away. What, Tra what Smith was going to do was, you know, have Travis walking, walking, walking. Travis would have said, all right, where are we going? And then Smith would have killed him. That's why, he said, why, that's why Smith says... I had to will myself to kill you because obviously you can't just kill your own brother that easily, you know, no matter how much you hate them or for whatever reason it is. But, um, so that was Smith's plan. He took Travis away and then let the group find out where Travis, you know, is supposed to be. That's where the group is. And then kill the group, Rick and Lewis and Dana. 
and then uh, so you know Smith wouldn't have any problems you know worrying about Rick having to get revenge or something like that so uh, yeah but unfortunately as you see in episode 34 Travis runs back and Smith's like no 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 Travis where are you going don't do this so yeah unfortunately uh, things don't go all the way as well as Smith wanted to but he still gets away with it oh all right now I need to talk about this episode right here Obviously, there's a very ominous opening right here. Now, this episode is by far my most proud work I've done on the show. Like, I'm very incredibly proud of this episode right here. I have watched this episode, like, about 20 times. And I'm telling you, I don't like watching my own stuff, to be fully honest with you. You know, this show is a little easier for me to watch because it's entertain. It's very entertaining, you know, there's a ton of characters and whatnot. But this episode right here is definitely the best work I've done. I think this episode is the best episode so far. Now, I know I said that in Season 2 about the flashback episode with, uh, you know, Tra or uh, Doc Brown. The one called Emmett Travis Brown. That is a very well done episode, I think. But I feel like this is the best episode now. Because, you know... Like I said, I kind of rushed Season 2. I think I did a good job on that episode in Season 2 in particular. But looking back, it's like I didn't have the good lighting. I didn't take my time. You know, I don't know. This this episode right here is all around, like, perfect. You get the tragic scene with Jeffrey getting slaughtered. You I know, mean, all of them getting slaughtered. But you also get the end with, you know, Travis finding them and all this other stuff. And, you know, the music and just... The way it plays out is just, I don't know, I, th I feel like I did a very good job on it. Hashtag humblebrag, that's a quote Deadpool uses. But anyways, and in that opening, I wanted to uh, do a little tribute to Breaking Bad. Now, if you watch Breaking Bad, best show ever made, in my opinion, uh, season two had, I'm not going to say what the spoiler is, but there was these ominous openings in uh, four of the episodes, I think? I'm trying to think. Uh, so three, seven, seven, or, yeah, it was four episodes in season two that had these ominous black and white openings. You're like, what is this? What does this mean? And then in the season finale, you find out, whoa, this is what these little openings were meant to be. Um, now, I decided to do a little tribute to that, where this episode, it doesn't have, it starts off, but there's no intro. There's no episode title. There's no Funko Street, nothing like that. This episode is completely different as you know, different from all the episodes. Every episode of the show has had an introduction, is what I'm trying to say. This episode has literally no introduction, aside from the black and white photos, the ominous music, and then the quote. Now, here's the thing about the quote. I knew this episode was going to be called Death Something. The title was going to include Death. Um, I came up with Death Themselves because, you know, there's a popular phrase, Death Himself, referring to the devil... Um, and I thought it'd be cool to refer to Task Force X as Death Themselves because it's several people, right? So, I knew the title was going to incorporate Death. Then I decided to include this quote, um, I am become Death, Destroyer of Worlds. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's a, um, well, here, let me, let me restart. I'm sorry, I'm doing this, you know, off the cuff. Uh, completely no script here. <laughs> um... I'm a big fan of the movie Full Metal Jacket, right? And there's a character in the movie Full Metal Jacket named Animal Mother, and it takes place in the Vietnam War. But this character, Animal Mother, he's completely a maniac. He has this big machine gun, and he wears a helmet on his head. Now, on the helmet, it says, I am become death. He wrote it on his helmet. And back when I first saw that movie, I'm like, what the heck is I am become death? Like, did he, like, misspell it? Is his grammar off? And then, um, years later, I actually looked it up. Hold on, I need to take a drink of water. I'm talking too much. I actually looked up, what is this I am become death thing? And it turns out it's a famous saying that J. Robert Oppenheimer uh, quoted, actually. He didn't say it himself. But when the atomic bombs went off in World War II on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, um, obviously tragic, horrible events that make me ashamed of America, to be fully honest with you guys. Um, it's just it's really sickening if when you think about it. Um, that instance uh, caused him, the man who actually invented the atomic bomb, he went on live TV on the news, and he, there's, you, you can look it up on YouTube, it's in black and white, but he's talking, and that exact quote, you know, this quote came, that I included at the beginning of this episode, um, he's saying all these terrible things, the world was not the same, people were silent, um, you know, it's a very ominous thing. 
Because this guy is responsible for all these people's deaths, if you think about it, because he invented the atomic bomb. He didn't pull the trigger or anything, but, you know, he obviously felt guilty. Um, so he said this very, very famous quote, and then he referred to this Chinese scripture thing that included the words, I am become death, destroyer of worlds. Now, I always thought that was a fascinating thing. I didn't know, though, that that was from a Chinese thing. Um, I thought, actually, J. Robert Oppenheimer was the guy that said that. Um, I thought he was like some, you know, German guy or something that wasn't speaking very well, you know, with his English. That's why I thought he said, I am become death, instead of becoming. But actually, it turns out it was a Chinese scripture thing that he quoted. He didn't say it himself. But pretty much what I'm trying to say, I always thought that was a very ominous thing. So, I included it at the beginning of this episode, and if you notice, the text, um, the word death turns red. Now, I wanted, uh, hopefully it worked. When you're reading that... When you get to the word death, it turns red right when you get to it. <laughs> that was my plan. Because, like, I, I knew, I thought it'd be cool to make that word stand out. Obviously, because the episode's called Death or whatever. Death themselves. So, um, like I said, I thought it'd be cool to have, right when the reader's eyes gets to the word death, it turns red. So, hopefully it did when you guys were reading that. Let me know. Um, I hope it worked. But, uh, yeah, this episode is just <laughs> absolutely insane. Um, I decided to destroy, you know, the pencil sharpener that's always there, um, Joker's prison, uh, Deadpool's gr uh, tombstone or whatever you want to call it, his statue. And hopefully if you guys watched the teaser trailer for season four, it, it included those black and white images. And you're supposed to think, oh my god, what happened? Did, did the Joker break out? Did What happened exactly? And then you see this episode and your, an your questions get answered. So hopefully the one, people, all the people that saw the teaser trailer get their questions answered right here so obviously look at this just crazy absolutely brutal lewis getting gunned down like nothing you know dana getting beat to death by men which is crazy because you know men aren't supposed to hit women obviously but jesus um rick getting his head cut off by katana and then of course rick uh rick flag shooting jeffrey like you know nothing uh very sad so yep and also, the season shows, you know, the ultimate worst thing that could happen to Travis is Jeffrey getting killed. Because, obviously, Doc Brown spent 30 years making a time machine, went back in time for the sole purpose of saving Jeffrey's life, and now Travis couldn't keep that, you know, keep that legacy. He failed in that. Jeffrey was killed because Travis wasn't there to save him. Um... That is something I wanted to do as a motivation for Travis. You know, like I said, killing Jeffrey was not easy at all. But if you think about it, that is the number one thing that can make Travis <clears throat> be a killer again, obviously. So that's why that needed to happen, if that makes any sense. Because that's the most tragic thing you could do, is kill off the most innocent character, obviously. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much why Jeffrey had to die. I... You know, many people probably would not like that, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Tragic things have to happen, is what I'm, was what I'm trying to say. So, and yeah, just a very sad ending right here to be continued. So, and if you notice the text is in white, special episodes, I've mentioned before, are going to have different text, different colors in the text, different fonts. So, <clears throat> if an episode starts off and it looks different, that's how you know, oh, this is a special episode. Okay, huh. <laughs> Alright, so now we're on episode 35, which is titled, uh, Deal or No Deal. Obviously, I got that reference from the game show, Deal or No Deal. But there's also a meaning in there, because you'll notice there's two scenarios in this episode. You have the scenario with Joker and Harley, and also Task Force X. They make a deal. They make a deal to work together to get Travis, right? Then there's also the scenario with Travis and Smith. They have the No Deal part of the title, where Smith is like, we need to get out of here. And Travis is like, sorry, but no deal. He literally says no deal. So it's technically deal and no deal, but I didn't want to call it that. I thought it'd be cooler to say deal or no deal. But in this episode, a deal does get made, and also a deal doesn't get made. So, yeah, both happen. Now, this episode, I actually had trouble making it long. Um, I, you know, obviously not many things happen in here. So I decided to add the scene where Travis, or not Travis where Joker and Harley actually disguise themselves. 
Believe it or not, I originally did not include that. So if you subtract that scene, this episode is very short, to be honest. Um, sorry, I gotta keep drinking water to keep talking this long. But um, I'm very proud of that moment, though, because it gives Joker and Harley a little bit of character, a little bit of uh, backstory, actually, to Harley. Because um, obviously in this season, they're not the main villains anymore. It's Agent Smith and Task Force X completely, and Undertaker later on, obviously, but um, I wanted to give Joker and Harley Quinn a little bit of development, you know, at least. Uh, so I decided to throw in this to make the episode longer, where they, you know, Joker goes into his Saul Goodman costume. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> uh, excuse me again. <laughs> Getting burpy now. Um, and Harley goes into her little sister costume which is what she originally looked like. And I thought it'd be cool to have this little conversation about Joker caring about Harley and giving her a taste of the craziness and all this stuff. It's just very cool to have little moments like that. And also the little exchange between Rick Flagg and Joker. You know, you're Saul Goodman? Really? What's this Travis's last name? Nice guy, Steen? Really? You know, it's just funny because they're pretending to be people they're not... Or Joker's pretending to be, you know, this lawyer or whatever. And Rick Flag knows. He's like, all right, these, this is Joker and Harley. They, they aren't, they're, they're not fooling us. Um, so it's pretty funny to do that. And also in uh, episode 33, I think, right? 33? Um, yeah, it was 33. Or Harley has a discussion with them, and he, she's like, my boyfriend's name is James Brown. <laughs> and Rick Flag's like, James Brown, the singer? Um, I think it's just funny to have little moments like that. Because like I said, this season is very bleak. Um... So I wanted to have funniness in it. And actually, to be honest, episode 39, coming up later, which is called Logan's Rum, is by far the funniest episode I've made, in my opinion. Um, I never laugh at my own, you know, comedy or whatever, but I think episode 39 is absolutely hilarious with Jack Sparrow and Wolverine and Nathan Drake. I think that episode's funny, really funny. Um... And I can't wait to see what you guys think of it. Like I said, that episode's supposed to come out on July 2nd, and it's only July 1st right now, so technically tomorrow. Um, so I can't wait to see what you guys think of it. But anyways, that episode's hilarious. So if you think about it, this season actually has the darkest episode, you know, Death Themselves, episode 34, and also the funniest episode, Logan's Rum, episode 39. Pretty crazy to think. But anyways, uh, like I was saying, uh, this episode was originally very short, and also the next episode, as you can tell, is very short because it's only four minutes, whereas all these other episodes are like eight minutes, nine minutes, and the finale is actually 12 minutes, which I'm very happy with. Um, it's actually the longest episode so far, but um, this episode I was able to make longer, as I said, with the scene right here with uh, Joker and Harley in disguise, and also the character development of you know Harley's backstory. But the next episode where Travis dies is very short, unfortunately, because, frankly, I couldn't figure out anything else to put in that episode, because when I uh, write out these episodes, I do a little uh, brainstorming at first, obviously, and then, <coughs> excuse me again, I'm all burps tonight, uh, <laughs> obviously I gotta uh, make uh, ten different episodes with, you know, different things happening in each episode, so I do like a little bit of an outline, I guess, um, so when I outlined the season, episode 36, unfortunately, just didn't have much to it aside from Travis getting killed. And, you know, Agent Smith revealing, you know, that he was behind everything. So that episode, unfortunately, was not long enough. But, you know, Travis getting killed is like, whoa, you don't really need much else if you think about it. You know, it's got enough shock value to it to where I don't think it'll be, you know, uh disappointing i guess because you know if you watch these episodes uh, day by day you know as they come out you know at first I, I hope nobody got disappointed with that one um you know like i said the two people that left comments on there were very happy with it. <laughs> like i saw that twist coming um and then bad productions 151 uh, i believe is his name was like these episodes are so good man i don't know how you do it well it's a lot of work uh you know like i said before but, um, yeah, it's just, um, these, you know, I make these episodes as if tons of people were watching. You know what I mean? You don't ever want to short yourself, no matter what, especially on when you're being creative. 
you never want to like uh, tone down your creativity. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said before, not many people watch these episodes. Like 50 people. I mean, who am I kidding? It's probably less than 50 people. <laughs> um, you know how many how many people realistically have watched every single episode? The Christmas special, the Cannonball special, every commentary. You know what I'm saying? I don't think every uh, there's there's not that many people that have watched all, every single video for the show. Um, now the people that do, I you know I really appreciate you guys. But being realistic, nobody watches the show. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, I do have 2,000-something subscribers, 2,020s, or 2,200-something as of right now. Um, but unfortunately, no, not every single one of them watches this series, you know, um, for one reason or another. It's, you know, it's whatever. I'm not forcing anybody to watch them. You don't have to. But you never want to short yourself. Because I feel like one day I will have, you know, a decent following. I, I, I feel like I'll have plenty of subscribers in the future that actually will go back and watch the show from beginning to end. Which is cool, because people like to binge watch. I've got nothing wrong with that. But when you release these seasons, um, when I release these seasons, they take so much hard work uh, to make. Because you got to brainstorm the episode, outline the episode, write the episode, which is like five to six pages long depending, um, then you gotta take all the pictures, then you have to edit, I know, oh no, then you gotta do all the voice acting, then you gotta edit, literally hundreds of hours, each episode approximately is average, I don't know, eight hours probably, to be fully honest with you guys, maybe eight hours to take each episode, I don't know, I feel like it probably does take that long, um, if you, if you add up all the time spent and divide it by ten, um, I don't know, it just takes a very, very, very long time. And I don't think it's really um, worth putting out an entire season one day. I've had this discussion before with my, my number one fan, Aaron, who I'm sure is listening. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, go against your opinion. You know, I, I honestly think it's cool to binge watch things, like Orange is the New Black, for example, on Netflix. I just watched season five of that show, which I think was great. Very much better than season three and four. But I binge-watched that season over the course of, like, two days. I loved it. Um, I do love binge-watching, I'm not going to lie. Um, especially with that season, because it was completely different from the other ones. If you, if you watch the show, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but with this right here, you know, with all the time spent, I all the time I spend on it, I don't want to release all the episodes in just one day. You know what I mean? Because barely any people watch it as is. And I don't want to release them, you know, on first... Because first impressions are everything, you know what I mean? When these episodes first come out, I want to have suspension in between each episode. Obviously, in episode 34, where everyone gets slaughtered, I don't want you going to the next episode right away. I mean, if you're lucky enough to have all the episodes out already, let's say you're watching this a couple of years from now, you can obviously just go to the next episode right away. But for the people that are fans of this, like as of right now, the few fans, I want them to be like wanting more after each day. So I release these episodes, you know, over the course of 10 days right here, because there's 10 episodes, one a day. So, you have 24 hours to, like, process. Oh, my God, did that just happen? Like, in this episode, Travis is going to get killed. So, I, I gave you guys 24 hours to be like, oh, my God, what's going to happen next? You know what I'm saying? So, so for two reasons. I don't want to... I want to have suspension between episodes. Because think about TV shows. You know, Walking Dead, for example. You have to wait a whole week to see the next episode, obviously. So, they're not just going to give you all the episodes. Netflix has the capability to do that because you just stream it on your uh, device or whatever um and they encourage binge watching that's their thing uh but for me you know like i said i did that with season two i released it all in one day and like i said i was disappointed with season two to begin with and i i'm disappointed with with that that i did that i don't like that i did that because like nobody watched season two when i first did that like <laughs> There was, like, five views on one episode of Season 2, and that was, like, the most out of Season 2. Most views. Uh, that was such a bad idea. Um, uh, you know, I, like I said, if you think different, that's fine. But in my opinion, I am i don't think I'm going to ever release these again in one, in one day, a whole season. I'm not going to do that again. I think I'm going to stick to the uh, whole season in 10 days thing. So, if you're offended by my burping, I'm sorry. I just, I burp a lot. <laughs> And, um, yeah, so the two reasons why was so I could have suspension between episodes 
and also because I don't think it's worth all the hours of hard work and dedication to making the show to just give it all up in one day. Because not all my subscribers, you know, go on YouTube every single day. Think about it. Let's say there's a, a sub subscriber. He's on YouTube, like, let's say on a Monday. And then let's say on Tuesday I release all these episodes. And then let's say he doesn't go on YouTube on Tuesday. And then let's say he goes on YouTube on Wednesday. Well, guess what? I released all the episodes on Tuesday. What if he doesn't check his subscription box for Tuesday? You know, what, what if he doesn't look at his subscriptions from, like, you know, the day before or something? You know what I mean? Let's say he subscribed to, like, a million channels, so... He has all these subscription videos to watch, but he doesn't see mine from the day before. So, it's not worth it, in my opinion. So, if obviously over the course of 10 days, you'll see, whoa, there's episode 38 or whatever. I didn't watch the previous ones. Let me go back and watch episodes 31 to 37. You know what I'm saying? So, I hope that makes sense. But here's Travis getting killed, of course, which is uh, <laughs> incredibly shocking. Like, you know, what my goal was for that... I was hoping you guys wouldn't expect Travis to get killed. I hope you guys weren't thinking, because obviously there's the thing with Deadpool and Undertaker. Now, I don't want to give the impression, you know, uh, for first-time viewers of like, oh, everyone's going to be coming back to life. Oh, my God, there's going to be whole... No, the idea is that you don't see all the dead people until Travis is dead, right? You don't see all the people that are in the afterlife. Um, I purposely did that because... What I want you to think is that Deadpool is the one who's going to be coming back to life by himself. Like, only Deadpool's coming back. It's going to be a separate storyline with just Deadpool and Undertaker. But really, no, it's going to be this thing right here coming up. Um, so I didn't want you guys to think that everyone was going to die and then come back at the end, obviously, which is what happens. But uh, after episode 34, where Jeffrey, Rick, uh, Dana, and Lewis all get killed, I don't. Want, you're definitely not going to think, whoa... They're all dead. Travis is gonna die too, right? No, you're you're gonna think there's no way I'd kill all these people. Um, and then yes, it actually does happen. Travis does die in episode 36 here, and um, that I hope was very shocking. Maybe like I said, the whole twist of Smith being behind it isn't so surprising. But uh, yeah, this is just a very <laughs> crazy thing to think about. So here we go. Travis is dead. Now I came up with this idea to have. Uh, Sean and Ed from Shaun of the Dead, one of my favorite movies ever, to be The Undertaker's, like, lackeys, I guess. Because uh, <laughs> once you die, I guess you have to go through this little filing system here. You have to put your name in, and then, you know, it's kind of like a waiting room. So let's say a bunch of people die at once, I guess. They'd have to wait in line or something <laughs> and put their name in the book. So that's what Travis is doing. He's putting his name in the book and getting teleported straight to hell. And I included this little uh, thing right here, You've Got Red on You. That's obviously a quote from Shaun of the Dead, but I thought it'd be cool for them to have a little slogan on the wall there, You've Got Red on You, with red in red letters, obviously, saying meaning like you're dead, I guess. You've got blood on you. I don't know. But anyways, uh, yeah. So here we go. We, look at this. <laughs> now, I actually thought... All these dead characters would take up so much space on my desk, but really they didn't take up that much space. I was surprised. So, um, here's the thing. I exempted a few dead characters, obviously. There's no Emmett Brown. Um, there's no C-3PO. There's no Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. There's no, uh, who else did I mention is not there? Uh, the Joker robot. Uh, and I think that's it. Who else is missing? But what I had to do, though, I had to go back and every single... I had to look back at every single episode and put every, write down every person that got killed. And then I had to uh, have them disappear in the order that they died. I'll get to that later. But um, the list was so long because I was like, whoa, I killed off so many characters already. Oh, my God. So I thought they would take up so much space on this desk that I wouldn't be able to like film it that well or anything. You know what I'm saying? So I decided to, like, erase as many characters as I could. Like, come up with a reason to get rid of several characters. So what I did, I was like, okay, C-3PO and the Joker robot are robots. So <laughs> there's no way they'd be dead. Which kind of makes sense, to be honest. That makes sense to take them off the list anyways. So I removed them. Then I decided to remove Stay Puft Marshmallow Man because I was like, all right, well, Stay Puft was just this, like, ancient spirit that got summoned or whatever, so... I don't think that qualifies as a person getting killed, so yeah. And besides, if you think about it, what if Stay Puff, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man was there down there with them? He would start destroying everything, so. 
And then I decided, okay, if I include Emmett Brown right here, you know, the older version of Travis, that's going to be a whole, like, extra 10 minutes of dialogue or something, a whole extra, you know, a whole extra conflict, right? Because Emmett would start scolding Travis, like, you let Jeffrey die? Oh my god, I worked 30 years to save him, blah, blah, blah. So, um, it would be too much, you know what I'm saying? It would be, like, extra if I included Emmett here. Emmett had his farewell in episode in season two, in that episode he died in, the black and white episode, um, which I think was a very good episode, like I've said. But um, he doesn't need to be shown again, you know what I'm saying? There was that episode in season three, Blast from the Past, where you see Emmett, but it was just a vision, you know, it was Travis's subconscious talking to him. So officially, Emmett has not come back. So I don't really want to bring him back, because that'd just be extra, you know what I'm saying? So I decided to write him off of this also, um... It'd just be too much. And I came up with, okay, well, if you think about it, Emmett was from the future. How can he be here? He's, you know, it doesn't make sense. Now, also, I kind of made a little, uh, <laughs> here's the thing. I came up with the artifacts thing, right? So I was like, okay, you need to have three artifacts. One can be Pinhead's Puzzle Box. One can be the Collector's Orb, because those have been shown to be powerful things on this show. And then I'll come up with the third one, Jack Sparrow's little, you know, gold or whatever, or silver, whatever you want to say it is. Um... So I was like, okay, Collector and Pinhead are have two of the artifacts. And then this third one, obviously I don't want to include all three. That'd be too easy for these characters. You have to get a third one from the living world and have somebody kill them and, you know, all that stuff. What you see in episode 39 is what I'm saying. Um, but since I said the Collector has an artifact, I was like, oops, wait a minute. <laughs> Isn't the Collector from the future as well? So why is he here? And so I included this dialogue of like, wait, why is the Collector here? He's from the future. Um, now, here's the reason. It's not explained, obviously, but I will reveal it here. Um, the Collector has an artifact, so that pretty much <laughs> allows him to do whatever he wants, I guess. He's allowed to exist in several uh, realities or, you know, timelines at once, if you want to say that. Because if you think about it, um, there must be a younger version of the, of the Collector in this time period, right? Because he looks like he's over 30 years old. He looks old. Um, you know, you see this version of him in the 30 Years in the Future segment in Season 1. So there must be a young version of the Collector, obviously. So I guess the orb allows him to exist in several time periods at once, if that makes sense. So that's the reason why, M or, that's the, reason why the Collector is there and Doc Brown is not. Because Doc Brown does not have an artifact. So, there's a chance you might see the Collector again, even though he dies in this season. You might see a young version of him again, with the orb, actually. You never know. We'll have to see. So, wait, am I saying that several artifacts, several of the same artifact can exist at once? What if the Collector got resurrected in episode 40, along with the rest of them, and he sees his younger self also holding an orb? Can two orbs ex exist at once? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really. I don't want to delve into that too much, but I don't know. I was just trying to answer the question as to why Doc Brown wasn't there. The main reason being, I just didn't want to have him because it'd be too much extra. And I think the perfect. I, I think I sent him off perfectly in season two. So yeah. And I thought this was funny. Deadpool uh, talking to Cthulhu yet again. And yes, Cthulhu. Now here's the thing. When I made season one and season two. I swear to God, I thought the name's thing was called Cthulhu, and I later on found out it's pronounced Cthulhu. I had no idea, so I thought it'd be funny to uh, show Cthulhu again, but actually have that dialogue. Wait, your name's pronounced Cthulhu? <laughs> so, that's why that was there. Um, obviously, Cthulhu disappeared first, because if you think about it, that was the first one that got killed in the new timeline here. Um... So really what I had to do was go back to Season 2, Episode 1, and uh, use those, the order of the deaths uh, right there, because this is a new timeline, obviously. Now also, you're probably wondering, um, are those the only people that have ever died in existence in this universe? Um, that's not explained either, but I will say here, uh, right now, no. There's obviously been other people that have died before them. I will say this. Um, all the people that died before them, obviously, when the Realm of the Dead gets too full, they start disappearing. So, all those people before Cthulhu disappeared 
And then Cthulhu showed up, was the first one of a whole new batch, obviously. So that's pretty much what happened to the people that existed beforehand, if that makes any sense. So, if there's a flashback per se, um, hint, hint, in the next season, and you see people dying, they were in hell, yes. But they were there before Cthulhu and all these people were. Cthulhu was the first person there out of this group, right? But before Cthulhu, there was an entire different group of people that died, you know, over the course of history. That disappeared because the Realm of the Dead got too full. Now, I originally didn't include this concept of the Realm of the Dead getting too full. I decided to include it just to have this suspension of like, oh my god, these guys are running out of time, you know, they're going to die. And also just to make it easier to have a, you know, who's going to live when there's only three options at the end, you know, when there's only three portals, only three people can get resurrected. Because originally I envisioned all these people working together, all the dead people working together to fight the Undertaker. So... I decided to incorporate this thing of like, oh, you're going to start this, everyone's going to disappear in the order they died, so that there can be less characters or whatever to deal with, and also, you know, and also suspension, and uh, yeah, so it's easier also to establish why Travis, Rick, and Deadpool are the three to get resurrected, because there's not many people left by the time they, you know, open the portal, so everyone starts disappearing, um, and I thought it'd be funny too to have Deadpool run in the portal and say, I call dibs, so yeah. And also, I thought it'd be cool to have this scene here with the Joker getting mad at uh, Smith. Because, you know, I like the dynamic with Joker and Travis, because obviously the Joker hates his guts. But he says right here, I respect him, and Travis deserved better. And you think about it, yeah, it's true, because Smith pretty much just killed him out of nowhere, and Travis couldn't defend himself. So, Joker's got a point. And, you know, also, a lot of people are probably watching this and going... The Joker wouldn't do this, because if you watch the Joker in Season 3 and the end of Season 2, he is not like this at all. You're probably like, did his time in the box change him? And the answer is actually yes, his time in the box did change him. He did change. So that's why the Joker is pretty much angry at uh, Smith for killing Travis. And, uh, oh, I just randomly remembered too, by the way, uh, I, I mentioned earlier there's a lot of foreshadowing. Um, this doesn't really have to do with this episode, but um, I forgot to mention the instances of uh, foreshadowing. Now, if you notice in episode 1 at the end, <clears throat> or episode 31, I should say, Mr. Nice Guy, at the end where everybody's sleeping, you'll notice as soon as you see that, everyone's lying on the floor as if they were dead. It's uh, Dana, Lewis, Rick, Jeffrey, and Travis. Now, obviously, that foreshadows all, of, all five of their deaths, actually, because um, it looks like they're lying there dead. And then also in episode uh, 34, and it's when that uh, ominous intro plays with the quote from uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, and then the word death is in red, and then the word death is lingering on the screen by itself. Um, literally, as soon as that goes away, it cuts right to Rick, Jeffrey, Lewis, and Dana, and those are the four people that get killed in that episode. Right when you see the word death, and then it cuts right to them. So... Um, there's a lot of instances of foreshadowing in this. And also, when Deadpool's reading the book Holes at the beginning, that has a lot to do... That If you, re if you read the book Holes, I, I picked that on purpose, because there's several things in that story that have to do with, you know, with uh, coming full circle and breaking a curse or whatever. You know what I mean? If, in, if you've read Holes or seen the movie, you know the curse of Madame Zeroni and that it lasted all this time, and then at the end, you know, it gets broken... It kind of has to do with this season, because, you know, people get killed, and then they ended up coming back to life at the end. Um, so, it's kind of similar. I don't know if that makes any sense. But, uh, I thought it'd be interesting to mention the foreshadowing. And then, also, if you notice, these little three uh, drawings here, those are actually painted. I actually painted those myself. Um, at first, I drew the little artifacts, and then I painted them with uh, gouache paint. I actually took an art class at my uh, college last semester, and that's where I got the gouache paint from. Um, I thought it'd be cool to, you know, make some little props, I guess you could say. Just so the realms look different. Obviously, there's three realms. Realm of the Dead, Realm of the Living, and, uh, the Deadpool realm, which is called Wade's World, I guess. Uh, but they're obviously all identical. So I thought it'd be cool to make them all look a little different. So Deadpool, I just, you know, put that little logo on the wall. 
the Deadpool logo and uh, left the holes book there just so you know you could tell which realm it was. And then in this realm, I thought it'd be cool to include the little artifact pictures. And then uh, Realm of the Living obviously just looks like how it is. But in this realm, I decided to move the pencil sharpener. One, because I destroyed it when I was taking the pictures for episode 34. I opened it up and all the little paper or pencil shreds came out. And then I decided to actually remove it just so this realm looks a little different. So yeah, there's no pencil sharpener here. Um, and then also, obviously, when Deadpool tra teleports everybody to his realm, he takes the little pictures with him. So yeah. Um, so hopefully it was a little obvious, like, hopefully you guys can tell that these are three different places, even though they're all identical. Uh, the reason I chose to do that was just because I figured, you know what, they all would be identical if you think about it. It's, you know, the world, but it's just different. I don't know. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> I don't know how the afterlife works, obviously, because I'm alive, so yeah. And also, Deadpool mentioned, this show is on a low budget, so <laughs> that's why they're all identical. And also, I gotta point out, most of this season takes place on this desk right here. There's not much in terms of, you know, filming on my floor, on uh, my DVD shelf. There's that scene, obviously, where Harley meets Task Force Sex on the DVD shelf, and then also Episode 35, where Harley and the Joker, you know, run into Task Force X. But, uh, and then the after credit scene also, I don't want to forget that. Those all take place on the DVD shelf. And that's it, actually. Uh, obviously, in Season 3, there was a lot of scenes that took place on the DVD shelf, because that's where the Joker uh, pretty much had his base, I guess you could call it. That's where him and his team would always hide. Um, and then there's not many scenes at all taking place on my floor in this season. Uh, there's just the one scene with Travis and Smith in Episode 33. Three, I think, and then in episode 34, obviously, where Travis runs back and he's like, no, I can't go with you, Smith. So, most of this took place on my desk. Now, the main reason why is just because it's a lot easier for me to take pictures at my desk here. And also, I wanted to see, you know, it was my first time working with a ring light. And I wanted to, you know, because the thing is pretty big, actually. It takes up a lot of space. So, I usually had to film from one angle. And it hopefully cuts, yeah, like from this angle here, the edge of my desk. See, it's always like at this angle, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Um, the camera. Because the ring light is on the other side, uh, and it's very big. You can see the reflection on Deadpool's head right there, actually, of the ring light. Um, it was my first time working with it, and it's pretty big, like I said. So I wanted to be able to get used to it first. So I purposely decided to have most of the season take place here. Um, and also, oh, a little error. <laughs> You'll notice right here, the collector uh, was not with them. There's one brief picture that shows the collector standing next to Ray. I actually forgot to include him. When I was taking the pictures, I actually forgot to film those scenes with the collector. So what I had to do, if you notice in the wide shot, you don't see the collector of all the people there uh, in uh, Deadpool's realm. But then there's a the one shot showing Ray next to Dana, and he's, you know, in front of the pencil sharpener, and the holes book is right there. You go back, you can see it. But the collector standing right next to him. I actually had to go back and take that photo. That whole photo was taken completely separately. Um, I don't even know if it was taken on the same day, to be honest. But anyways, um, yeah, that was a little error, but I fixed it. So, you briefly see the collector with all those guys. I don't know why I completely forgot to grab him. He has one of the artifacts. I mean, come on. <laughs> so, yeah. And also, oh, I made an error also with the uh, pictures of the artifacts. If you notice, when Deadpool teleports everybody, he doesn't take the pictures with them. But then it cuts to the pictures, and then those get teleported, like, separately. It kind of works, though, for, like, comedic purposes, I guess. He's like, oh, let me take the people with me. Oops, I forgot the uh, collector, or the uh, artifact pictures. Let me teleport those with me, too. But I actually for, uh, didn't, I forgot to take those, uh, make them disappear with everybody else when Deadpool teleported them. So that's why they were teleported separately. Um, but it actually worked out pretty fun funny. Now, coming up here is, like I said, the funniest episode, Logan's Rum. Now, the title's obviously a play on Logan's Run, which was a movie, I think? I don't know much about it, but I'm very familiar with the title. Um, and it was also a book originally, I think. But it'd be funny to call it Logan's Rum, because obviously Logan, Wolverine, and Jack Sparrow, Rum, so yeah. <laughs> and they're pretty much the two main characters in this episode. Um, along with Deadpool, actually. And Nathan Drake, because, you know, he's there. He helped Wolverine get back. It was the after credit scene in Season 3 where you first see Nathan Drake, and he's like, oh, I can help you get back inside. 
Now, that's what his character is. He can pretty much find anything. That's his unique ability, and he knows a lot about treasures. So I thought it'd be cool to have him know about Jack Sparrow's uh, Aztec gold, I guess. That's what I came up with. Or no, Aztec silver, sorry. But, uh... <clears throat> You know what? It was very <laughs> unique coming up with Jack Sparrow's voice because, like, you know, Johnny Depp does a very unique job of playing him. So I was like, what voice can I do for Jack Sparrow? So I kind of just came up with it on the fly as I was recording my voice for this episode. I just, you know, because I, I do it in one take. You know, if I mess up, I'll stop and redo a line or whatever. But I do it all in one take pretty much. So, as soon as I get to Jack Sparrow, I'm like, alright, here goes nothing. And I just try a random voice and it kind of worked out. So, I don't know. I can't re really recreate it right now, because I, I don't even know, like, what I did, to be honest. I don't know. I just came up with something, and it worked, so, yeah. And thankfully, he was only in two episodes, so it wasn't hard to remember how to do it when I got to episode 40. But, uh, anyways, I forgot to mention the title names uh, for 38, right? 37, like I said earlier, was called Travis Goes to Hell, because that was the idea for the movie. Uh, I would have called it Travis Goes to Hell. I don't know. Funko Street, Travis Goes to Hell. Something. <laughs> but um, that's pretty simple. Self-explanatory. Then the next one was called The Rules of Hell. Now, I called it that because, obviously, the episode has to deal with The Undertaker explaining you have to get the artifacts, you can all brought be back to life, you can all be uh, brought back to life, blah, blah, blah. He's explaining the rules of hell. And then, you know, all of you are going to disappear in the order you died. I can't do anything about it. And I came up with the phrase, The Rules of Hell. Well, I didn't come up with it. I got it from a, uh album by Black Sabbath. There was an album by Black Sabbath called The Rules of Hell. And I have one song off of it on my iPhone, I think. Um, or my iPod, whatever you want to say. My music library. And I always thought that was a cool name. So I just used that. I don't know. It's not really a popular album or anything. It's just... One of their albums called The Rules of Hell, so I decided to use it. And a lot of these titles, like I said, have to do with hell and death and devil and stuff like that. So it kind of fit the season. All right, so now uh, this is just really funny right here. I wrote this very long thing. I thought it would actually be longer than what it was right here, this single shot of Deadpool. Or, yeah, the single shot right here, and Deadpool is talking to everybody, trying to find, find out what the shapes are called on Jack Sparrow's thing. But, um... I thought it would be a lot longer, but it's it's still pretty long. And then Wolverine's like, Jesus Christ, you're going to tell me what to draw or not? I don't know. It's just really funny. And there's going to be a lot more Wolverine and Deadpool coming in the future. Trust me. Um, I have stuff planned out for them. Um, just funny stuff right here, seriously. And, of course, Deadpool's statue's lying on the ground, which is even funny, funny to look at. Um... <laughs> And then you get Jack Sparrow. Every line of Jack Sparrow's like includes the word rum almost. Uh, I don't know. This episode is just funny as hell. Like I, I watched it. This is like my second most watched episode this season. Like I said, I watched episode 34, Death Themselves, a lot of times. I watched this one, you know, a lot of times as well, but not as much as that one. But I'm very proud of this episode as well. Like I said, I think it's the funniest one I've done so far. It's laugh out loud hilarious. Um, <laughs> I hope it is for everybody. Like I said, I can't wait to see what everybody thinks of it. So, yeah, um, I can't think of any much else to talk about this season. What, did I miss anything? Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think I pretty much covered everything so far. I'm talking about the foreshadowing. I talked about the episode titles. Um, hmm. Oh, and also, uh, with the Joker and Harley... I didn't want to kill them off. I originally actually wanted... I was going to have Task Force X kill Harley. And then that would have motivated the Joker to get revenge. But I decided not to do that. Because I feel like there's more I could do with them in the future. You'll see what I mean. Um, so I let the Joker and Harley Quinn live. And they ran off, obviously. So you didn't see where they went. But you'll find out next season. Uh, they're still alive, yeah. Joker, yet again, got away with it. Uh, well, not really. In Season 3, he got captured. But still, he didn't die. I think it's fascinating to think that the Joker has avoided death this entire series. Like, he hasn't gotten killed yet, whereas everybody else pretty much has gotten killed. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot. Like I said, I mentioned this in the Season 3 commentary, I think. When you have such an interesting villain, you can do so much with them. It's cool not to kill them off, you know, and to keep them around. That was one of the reasons why I had J uh, Joker not get killed at the end of Season 3 and get put into prison. Also because of Travis not wanting to kill anymore and all that stuff. But yeah, I think it was cool to keep the Joker around, and obviously I'm still doing that. So, 
there's more to come with him. So, you know, he wasn't really, he was more of a supporting character in this season, but there'll be more of him in the future. So, don't worry for fans of the Joker. Oh, and I might as well talk about what I mentioned earlier with uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy by Alice Cooper and, and how I was able to use some of it. Now, here's the thing. Um, I envisioned that episode 40 would end, would end with Travis saying, all right, we're going to war, blah, blah, blah. And it will cut right to saying Funko Street Season 4 and then No More Mr. Nice Guy would start playing, obviously. You know, like it does in episode 40. <clears throat> and then the rest of the song would continue to play into the credits, right? But here's the thing. Obviously, with YouTube, you can't use copyrighted music. So I knew ahead of time, I was like, all right, I'm probably not going to be able to use it. So um, there's this thing, though, that people try to do to get away with using music, right? They uh, change the pitch. They change, like, the... What's it called? They change the pitch. They change the speed. They change several things in the song. They put it on a little music editor, I guess, or audio editor, whatever you want to call it, and they edit the song to try to make it sound different, right? So I actually decided to try that because I have a thing on my laptop that allows me to edit sound files, right? So I tr I tried a version of using the, you know, like a good two minutes of the song or something like that. But it was completely different pitch, different tone, or not tone, different speed. It was a little sped up. Um, and I, up I, t like I uploaded the video to see if it would work. And guess what? <laughs> Copyrighted, cannot work, blocked worldwide. You know... Copyright laws, like, make no sense to me on YouTube. Like, I don't understand how it works. There's some things you can use, and they're like, okay, you can use this, but you can't monetize the video. Now, personally, if I was able to use the No More Mr. Nice Guy song, and they let me use it, but I couldn't monetize the video, I would do it. I wouldn't mind, you know? It's only, you know, it's fair enough to me. Um, but no, they it literally said, blocked worldwide, you can't you can't use this video. You can't, Nobody can watch it because the song's in it. It's copyrighted. You can file a com you can file a thing or whatever blah blah blah. It's like it's too much. It's stupid. Um, personally, I think you should be able to pay like a dollar or whatever, and then you can use like a minute of a song. You know what I'm saying? Pay you you should be able to pay to use music. I don't understand why you can't do that. YouTube really needs to work on that. Like they offer free music on the site, but it mostly it's nothing really that good. And then also if you use it. You know, you, I don't think you can monetize your video, which is annoying. Um, so, you know, I didn't want to use one of those stupid cheap songs. I'll, I'll just rather use nothing. But I decided to try... All right, what if I use, like, five seconds? <laughs> what if I just use the part where he says, No more, Mr. Nice Guy! And then it just fades away. So I tried that. Obviously, is what happens in this episode, episode 40, which is starting right now. Um, and it actually worked, surprisingly. I didn't edit the sound, I didn't edit the speed, I didn't edit, you know, the, the pitch or anything. I literally took five seconds of the actual song and put it right there at the end of this episode, and it worked. I'm able to monetize the video, I didn't get any warnings, nothing. So, I guess you can actually use a few seconds of a song and get away with it, apparently. So, yeah. Um, I'm very happy that worked out. So, uh... Obviously, the special episode, it's a season finale. It's different colored text there. It's gray. Um, mainly because it's a bleak season, so I decided to go with gray. And also, you get the black and white photo at the end. Now, here's the thing also. Um, I knew that I wanted to use No More Mr. Nice Guy, the song, in the credits. Like, hopefully, in you know, in a perfect world, I would have been able to use the whole song during the whole credits, right? But at the same time, I was like... Since Jeffrey dies or whatever, and this is his last episode right here, um, I thought it'd be cool to also have a black and white photo during the credits, you know, which which is actually the... Because he's the first person you see on this show when you watch episode one. He's the first character that you see. So it's only fitting that he gets, like, a little uh, special tribute during the credits. Like, I'll take, a, you know, I'll take the very first picture from the very first episode, put it in black and white... And that, and then the credits can roll over that. That I thought that'd be perfect, right? But then at the same time, you know, it's supposed to be sad. So I was like, I shouldn't play this "No More Mr. Nice Guy" song with it because it kind of doesn't mix with it, right? Um. So I decided, you know what? Maybe I'll just use that little five seconds or whatever of him saying "No More Mr. Nice Guy," and then that's it. And then I'll use this like sad piano music. So it actually kind of worked out. I'm able to use the song, technically, and monetize the video. And also, the credits are, you know, sad. Whereas, if I used the No More Mr. Nice Guy song for the whole credits, it wouldn't have sounded sad. You know what I'm saying? 
So obviously right here also with these three portals, I actually painted those with gouache. And you know what? Something else interesting here. I'm not going to like delve too much into this, but you'll notice the colors. Now obviously there's just this, the three primary colors and then mixed with the uh, three secondary colors. But also, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're with, uh, what's it called? What's the term? Um, I'm supposed to be an art student, but I <laughs> can't remember the term. They're uh, complementary color. Red is with green, blue is with orange. I think that's the right term, right? Complementary color. Opposite of the color. On the color wheel, it's the color opposite of them, right? So red is with green, blue is with orange, yellow is with purple. Now, if you'll notice... Deadpool goes into one portal that has a certain two colors on it. Travis goes into a portal that has a certain two colors on it. And Rick goes into a uh, portal with certain two colors on it. Now, I didn't plan this, um, <coughs> but when I was filming, when I was taking the pictures, I realized, wait a minute, one of these uh, portals actually has something to do with, I plan, you know, I actually plan on doing something with a character that has to do with these colors. I'm not going to say anything. But each of these three characters that go through the portals, Rick, Travis, and uh, Deadpool, the colors they go through actually correlate to something that's going to happen to each of them. Um, I, won't, I won't reveal much, but you can probably interpret it. Um, I will reveal Travis's, though. It's kind of obvious. Um, well, to me, it's obvious. I will, I'll reveal his. I won't reveal Deadpool and Rick's, because those are kind of spoilers in the future. But uh, Travis's colors are green and red. Now, actually, that's pretty simple. Travis has obviously had a history of violence. He was a hitman. He's got a gun. He's killed people. So the red represents blood, and the green represents him because he wears green. So that's all Travis has to do with him. So the green and red for Travis, um, that's what has to do with him. But I didn't realize these things until I was filming this, like I said. So once I had to film the part of Deadpool going to a portal, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, he should go through this portal because of this. I'm not going to talk about it, but <laughs> when it happens, you'll see. And when I do a commentary for it, whenever it is, I'll talk about... Yeah, this is what I was referring to. Um, so yeah, the colors actually have a meaning. <laughs> I didn't plan on it, but it, they do. So yeah. Just by happenstance, you know what I'm saying? And obviously, you gotta have an epic finale. So the Undertaker, you know, I don't think it's a, a surprise, really. He turns out to be a villain. So yeah, they fight the Undertaker, and yeah. So <laughs> the pin, Pinhead actually works with them. They work together. So I think that's cool. <gasps> I always think it's cool when bad guys and good guys have to work together. And obviously they're destroying The Undertaker. Jack Sparrow got killed. You know, I kind of I kind of wish I kept Jack Sparrow around. I didn't know he'd be such a great character, you know? Um, but like I said, only three people can get resurrected. So I really couldn't have Jack Sparrow be one of them. That would have been a waste. Obviously I'm not going to let Rick die. Rick's such a like interesting character. And he had a lot to do in Season 3 and uh, stuff like that. He's like a main character now. So, <clears throat> that's why I decided to have Rick survive, Travis, obviously, um, and Deadpool, because, I mean, come on, Deadpool is, it's Deadpool. He's got to come back. That's another thing I wanted to do. I kind of regretted killing off Deadpool, so here we go. And he could, you know, figure out what those colors mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Just think about it. Anyways, uh... <laughs> So yeah, now we're down to like, okay, who's going to survive? And then, you know, it gets a little emotional because people start disappearing. It's like, uh-oh. Now, another thing I could have did here, um, I didn't want to dwell on it. Travis killing Daryl, you know, last season. There was that little dream sequence in third, episode 31. And then also, when Travis goes to hell in episode 37, Daryl sees him and talks to him. He's like, I've got nothing to say to you, blah, blah, blah. Um, I could have did more with that, having Travis talk to Daryl, have dialogue with Daryl, but I decided not to. Like I said, it might have been just a little bit extra. Kind of like if I had Doc Brown in this season. Uh, that would have been extra. So, I don't know. I kind of maybe should have did that. I don't know. It wasn't really necessary, if you think about it, because Daryl obviously just dies. He just disappears and dies, so. Yeah, I didn't do that. So, oh well. But obviously, you know, Travis was haunted by the fact that he shot Daryl in cold blood. It really did bother him. So, I did want to include that scene, at least, in episode 31 with the nightmare. <coughs> Alright, so here's where things get emotional, obviously. They have to leave Jeffrey behind. Because Jeffrey's like, you know what? I couldn't save myself. You know, it's not worth 
Jeffrey's pretty much trying to say it's not worth saving me so many times because obviously it just <clears throat> it's inevitable. And I mentioned in the season three commentary or season two that even though this is a new timeline, certain things happen inevitably. Because if you notice the original timeline and the new timeline, several of the same things happen, even though they're different timelines. Um, so Jeffrey's death is one of those things, I think, if you think about it, you know, looking back. This is one of the things that just has to happen, I guess, in order for things to move forward. Some things are inevitable. So that can be added to that list of inevitable things. Now that we see this, Jeffrey's dead once again, and it's Travis's fault, technically. He feels guilty about it, and that's what's going to happen going into Season 5. So yeah, I had to include that little head turn right there, because he's just like, ah, I can't believe I'm doing this. But uh, <clears throat> And obviously right here, a little homage to the very first episode, where Jeffrey's sitting alone, and he looks to the side, looks to the side, and he just sighs, and, and then now he's gone for good. <clears throat> This is the second time we recreated episode 1. I had to do it the same in episode 11 when they uh, went back in time. And goodbye. That's it for Jeffrey. Alright, so here we are. Final scene. <clears throat> now here is the new group of characters. We got Wolverine, Nathan Drake, Rick, Daryl, and Travis. So, yeah. We got the new five right here, as I like to call them. And then this little part right here, um, Travis is, you know, he's obviously very angry. He's feeling a lot of things right now, and these guys can't really, you know, comprehend it. But Rick's like, yeah, this is what happened. He had to leave some people behind, blah, blah, blah. And then there's a shot coming up soon where you zoom in on Travis. I really, I really am pictured, the, I pictured this from the beginning. The final shot would be this. A very awesome close-up zoom in on Travis, which was actually a bunch of photos I took. Um, <clears throat> it was like over 30 photos, just that little shot of going up to Travis. Um, if you notice, it gets out of focus, which I think looks cool, actually. But I, I didn't do that on purpose. Anyways, uh, <laughs> and then it gets focused in again. But when it goes up to Travis, and then he turns his head, and he says that final line, I pictured that right from the beginning as the no more Mr. Nice Guy moment. So, yeah. Excuse me yet again. How many times did I burp during this commentary? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> um, so yeah, episode 31, Mr. Nice Guy. Episode 40, no more Mr. Nice Guy. So that's the full circle moment right there. Um, so yeah, and then I you know, put the texture to the side, obviously, because you don't want to block Jeffrey. Um, and I made it yellow just because... If you don't know, yellow is the best color to include as uh, your, you know, for subtitles or whatever, because it's the easiest color to see. No matter what's behind it, you can see yellow better. Is what I'm trying to say. So, you can clearly see what it says. All right, here we are. Big surprise <laughs> after credit scene. I don't think anybody sees the, saw this coming. Now, these are the characters from Asher's Evil Dead, the TV show. I highly recommend it, by the way, if you're uh, Evil Dead fans. Um. Ruby, Pablo, and Kelly. Now, I, like I said before, I wanted to do more with these uh, evil characters, you know, Pinhead's group. So I thought it'd be cool to have Ash come back to life, but by accident, they bring back everybody else in his group. It's like, whoopsie, uh-oh, didn't plan on that happening. So now I introduce the Book of the Dead, which is able to resurrect people, but it only resurrects evil people. So don't think that this book can bring back anybody. Don't think it's going to bring back Lewis or Jeffrey or anybody like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so look, there they are. And I decided to include Sean and Ed because I think they're fun characters. I didn't want to just, you know, get rid of them like that. So they were brought back as well. And now they're stuck with these guys. So <laughs> we'll have to see what happens next season. But uh, yeah. And there's also one mysterious person at the end. I'm not going to talk about that. But if you know who it is, you know who it is. And that you might be able to figure out a few things that way. I don't know. If you know who that person is that you see at the very end in the last shot coming up, you know what he might have to do with the re uh, Season 5. So we'll have to see. Um, so yeah. But I want to stress, like I said, this Book of the Dead, this ne Necronomicon here, it can only bring back evil people. So... 
And also, when The Undertaker died, the gates of hell were closed for good. He said that one line. Once I am dead, the gates of hell are closed for good. So once somebody dies again, that's it. They're dead for good. So let's say Deadpool dies again in the future, he's dead. So, or, you know, no pun intended, his name's Deadpool. But <laughs> I'm not saying Deadpool's going to die again. But if he does, for instance, or Rick or anybody, they're dead for good. So there's no more hell. There's no more afterlife. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. Because they killed The Undertaker and hell's closed for now, forever now so here we go big surprise all right thanks for watching guys and yeah you're awesome if you watch this whole video Bye bye